So a few days ago, I mentioned in my video that I would be revisiting the Nuggets and Timberwolf series after game three, clearly not anticipating what would happen in that game. The Denver Nuggets lost game two by 26 points and then immediately after went on to win game three by 27. Some of the adjustments that they made were actually pretty interesting and that's the reason why I was so excited for the series in the first place, as I said in a previous video or the video about game one, would be the adjustments on a game to game basis and that's exactly exactly what we saw from the Denver Nuggets in game three. So they started out running a lot of actions for Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic that would end up going to the baseline or the corner area rather than going down the middle. And I want to actually credit uh, Hoop Venue for pointing this out in a video that he made after game two, where he basically had realized that a lot of the possessions where they were able to get easy looks were, well, which were not that common, but a lot of those possessions were actions in which Jamal Murray would come off of the Jokic screen and basically just operate in open space in the corner rather than trying to just drive down the middle of the lane. Because every time he would do that, or really the entire team would try to get something going downhill just straight into the paint. That's when they ran into the most issues. And that was really a lot of what they were doing in game two, which is why they were so just boxed and had so much trouble being able to create advantages on offense. Game three, we saw a lot of actions with Jamal Murray, as I just said, operating in open space off of the pick and roll going into the corner area rather than just going straight down the middle and he was able to get off a lot of clean looks especially early on which was important because as we know Jamal Murray only needs one or two to go in and if he gets those going early you can probably anticipate him having a pretty big game and that's exactly what happened he was four for six in the first quarter all of them being two pointers which was really all he needed to get going for the rest of the game on top of this it seemed like they made it a point to try to get as many Timberwolves in foul trouble as physically possible. Jaden McDaniels was in foul trouble the entire first half, mainly because of Jamal Murray. He only played seven minutes and 41 seconds in the first half, and that's obviously a really big blow to this Timberwolves team, which pretty much relies on his ability to chase around guys like KCP and Michael Porter Jr., Jamal Murray mainly. And, that, and so that was another factor in Jamal really being able to get going in the first half. He had 18 points in total, eight for 13 from the field and a lot of them were actually pretty decent looks there were some that were a little bit more contested than others but for the most part these are about the types of looks that you would like to see Jamal Murray get and another thing that the Nuggets tried to do a lot in game three was trying to put Cat in more actions to try to make him guard in spaces and Nas Reed as well they can move well for their size but obviously not the type of defender that Rudy Gobert is Cat definitely held his own in game two as well as Nas Reed but but it seemed like Jamal Murray and whoever was coming off the pick and roll made it a point to go a lot quicker so that they would have sort of a tougher time trying to close out. But again, there were still some possessions where people like Cat would be able to pick him up on the screen and actually do a pretty good job on him. But as, as I said before, he was eight for 13 in the first half. So those possessions were not common. Rudy Gobert, for whatever reason, and we noted this while we were watching the game live, he only played 13 minutes in the first half despite only having one foul because we originally thought that he was in foul trouble but he had only had one foul and he there were large portions of the first half where he was just sitting out he rested 11 minutes of the first half and so it was really interesting to see given that I mean he's the four time now defensive player of the year and so I would expect that you would want to be playing him as much as possible especially in a situation where you're struggling to get stops like they were in the first half but I digress. I again do not know as much <laughs> as Chris Finch or the Timberwolves coaching staff as a whole, but that one really made me scratch my head in, in real time and especially right now. But even in addition to that, one of the main factors that would end up being the most beneficial to the Denver Nuggets in game three was their improvement on defense. And we saw this a lot, especially in the second quarter. The type of coverages that the Minnesota Timberwolves have been running on Aaron Gordon, we saw some of that with the Denver Nuggets nuggets as well as they were pretty content to just leave Jaden McDaniels open in the corner while they usually it would be Aaron Gordon where they would drop off of him and just help on that drive in terms of just overall defense like overall team defense the nuggets just played a really good game. They were able to break up a lot of plays, a lot of passes. Jokic had three steals and two blocks in this game. Michael Porter Jr. had a couple steals where he was just playing the passing lane. Jamal Murray had three steals and a lot 
lot of these plays were live ball turnovers and so Denver was able to get out in transition a lot more in this game as I noted in game one really where they had the most success with scoring especially in the first round as well and just the entire season has been in transition and so when you give them that amount of transition opportunities or at least way more than what they had in games one and two you can run into problems because even though the Timberwolves really didn't miss that many shots they were 44% which isn't horrible but the turnovers and the amount of them that they had especially in the second and third quarters were pretty much the nail in the coffin because Denver was able to get out and transition so much another factor that was possibly the nail in the coffin for the Timberwolves in this game Aaron Gordon was four for four in the third quarter three of those being three pointers now we've seen the Minnesota Timberwolves kind of dropping off of Aaron Gordon to defend whatever action they may have going on whether it's with Jamal Murray Michael Porter Jr uh Reggie Jackson KCP or you know anybody like that we saw that again in this game and he he was just hitting his shots like even when he had hit two in a row you can see Jaden McDaniels is still like not even really fully closing out and so they were still daring him to shoot even after he was hitting but I mean if he if, if he's just hitting these now then you know hats off to him you can't really do anything else if, if he's just deciding to hit these and so that was pretty much the game in terms of what we might see in game four I have no idea like these teams just took turns waxing each other in back-to-back -back games and so I think that game four is actually gonna be one of the closer games of this series however long it goes and we should see an improvement from the Timberwolves just from an offensive standpoint because they did miss a lot of open shots in this game as well Nas Reed had a few layups in the first half that he just missed Anthony Edwards same thing Mike Conley Cat only had two shot attempts inside the three-point line and Anthony Edwards wasn't really all that aggressive in this game or when he was it was what I felt like in the wrong spots he was settling a lot for jump shots and three pointers and so I assume that his shot diet is going to be different in game four but we'll have to wait and see for that one Rudy Gobert should not like he he should be playing 30 plus minutes and there's no possible logical reason why he shouldn't be he played 27 minutes in game three but despite not being in foul trouble the entire night again we were all just scratching our heads about out what this rotation was but even in addition Kyle Anderson was getting a lot more minutes because of the Jaden McDaniels foul trouble Nas Reed never really got going he was only two for seven tonight a lot of those open shots that he was getting off of the Jokic pick and rolls were just not there in game three so credit to the Denver defense I assume that the Nuggets are gonna try the same thing to start the game in game four because they are notorious for the philosophy of if it works we're just gonna keep going to it until you stop it and so there's that also it is worth noting i forgot to mention this earlier the nuggets were shooting close to 60 percent from the field before the starters were pulled out and so that was another factor they were obviously just hitting a lot of shots but also getting a lot of easy shots in transition as i said before because of all the turnovers and the missed shots from minnesota so it should be interesting to see what happens in game four if minnesota is able to clean up their offense but that is something we will just have to wait for. If you're watching this the day that it comes out, that means the OKC Thunder just played game three of their series. And I recently made a video about them and their series with the Dallas Mavericks. So if you want, you can check that out right here. But with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the bell to be notified when I upload. Comment down below what you want to see next. And as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.